I would like to say. Why are you yelling? I want to make a statement. Okay. And I don't understand. That Slaughterhouse album is one of the best albums in hip hop and is very highly underrated. I said it. Thank, thank you. That I was, said it, motherfucker. That was a difficult uh, Calm down. time in hip hop for me. Why was it Why? a difficult time for you? Well, that record was really kind of my uh, answer to all of the. I got a lot of flack from the Me and the Biz record because of the puppet and the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And being from Brownsville, Brooklyn, and oh, what's up with the puppet? You know, I, was I like, love oh. early hip hop slack. Yeah. What assholes! <laughs> like that was such a big deal. Some you soft? Puppet. Why you got a puppet, son? Right. So you know, I went in the studio and tried to do just the grimiest, grittiest, well done, hardest album I could do, and that was the result. Slaughterhouse. Well done. How many albums that? How many copies that sell? Um, it was. It didn't go gold, so. Um, probably somewhere around 200, somewhere in there. Bootleg era. A little over. Yeah, but think about the era we lived in, that an album that hard would have even sold 200,000 copies. Yeah, that wouldn't happen at all. No. And 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 keep in mind, if you're thinking, well, it, it had whatchamacallit, it had, it had whatchamacallit, Born to Roll on it. No, it didn't. It kept Born to Roll on it later. Or it came on the next album. Yeah, it was on the next album. How did, so, so did Sitting on like Chrome a, sell better? Cheap-ass nigga yeah. remix. Sitting on Chrome sold much better. I'm going to tell you the truth right now. I'm going to say something right now to your face, Mouse Say it, say it. I hate Born to Roll. Really? Hate? Wow. Hate a Jeep ass is my song. Don't Born go to, to Roll. Saying that. What'd you say? Don't go to Cali saying that. No, I won't. Yeah. Oh, and the I understand. Song. Yes. The song. I love Jeep ass. Right. Born to Roll. To Jeep me. Jeep ass what? I can't say it. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Jeep ass N word. <laughs> and job. I love that song. It. I know it's, it's one of those tough songs that you love. You can't even say the full Which name. Which one do you like better? The regular one, the remix, or the, the beat appella? Biz Capella. Biz Capella. I just like the original. What's that in your cassette deck? <laughs> <laughs> Is that on the single? Yes. The mean. clear vinyl. And clear vinyl with Saturday Night Live on the... I mean, don't get me wrong, though. I like I, Live from New York. I like Saturday, Saturday Night Live night. more than <laughs> Jeep. <laughs> you married Paula Perry? No. no that's man. horrible to say. Oh, oh my man. Married. Somebody passed me a knife. Someone else married Paula Perry? You married Lachey? Yes. I get confused. Those was all on the same records, okay? Give me a freaking break. Um, And are you still with her? Why did you get so upset? Paula oh. Perry, I mean, I don't know what she, she looks she like. Talks Maybe crazy it was about me on Twitter. Paula right. Perry does. Oh yeah, she talks crazy. Good. I agree oh, with everything she says. No, what does she say? You're not cool no more. <laughs> nah, she talks crazy now. Still, still. So why? So I just confused his wife with Her. his sworn enemy. <laughs> I love doing stuff like that. She talks That's crazy mistake. about you. Yeah, just like little slick stuff, like you know, stupid stuff. Like really, yeah. still to this day, 2014. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo, but extra, wow. but extra, extra was tough. Don't lie. I mean, what about Paula's Jam, though? Yeah, it was pretty good, too. Oh, yeah. I got both those joints. Oh, how about fucking, um, what's the song you have with her on the album? The, 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 were you robbing her? Oh, 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 who you jacking? Yeah. God, Ace. Oh. Classic song. Greatest Classic. Songs hold on, hold on, but real quick. We're going backwards, apparently. However, your, was your marriage to Lachey a, um. Worst? Like a shotgun? Sorry. No, I didn't, mean, I didn't mean like that. Was that the uh, was was the, was there something that related to that and the dissolving of no. Master Ace Incorporated? No, no, all of that stuff happened. Our our us hooking up and whatever and becoming getting in a relationship happened after I wasn't messing with Digger no more or Paula anymore. Okay, this is groundbreaking, by the way. I've never you never talked about, about that never because talked. I thought it was the other Welcome way around. One up, Master Ace. That's, that's what, yeah, that's what we do. So because I thought you were still with them, and then you started uh, in, in, investing your time in your wife, and it led to the dissolving of the group. No. You, that is not true. No, the dissolving of the group started. Lord Digger was the catalyst of the dissolving of the group because he actually got a deal behind my back with Loud. He and, did behind yeah. your back. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, we we're working together, right? He, the whole idea is that he's going to be part of the production company and and, and we're going to get him this deal. Mm. And he just went and did a deal, didn't tell us anything. Wow. And then came back and was like, yo, I got to I got to deal with live. I was like, what? I like, love just, those convos. That was the beginning of kind of the end. Are you, yeah. and I'll full disclosure, Digga's my man. Are you and Digga good? You're fine, we're okay. right? We, 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 when my mom passed away, I wound up just, we wound up re- reconnecting through Shot Stimuli's brother. And um, Man, just had a conversation and just kind of buried the hatchet, and that was it. So when your mom's passed, you guys end up talking. Yeah, we wound up talking and just kind of buried the hatchet. So it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. So you still have disagreements about what happened back then, but you're over it. Yeah, more or less. I, I mean, 
I'm clear on what happened back then. <laughs> I believe you. Yeah, he has a, a, a completely different, different version. version of things. Yeah. Were you involved with helping him get his placements and things like that? Of course, he produced on no. Biggie's album. That was all him. That was all him. Him, him, and Norm, um, Witch Doctor. You know, they. I, I actually didn't get. I didn't even try to get in the way of that. Like I was like happy that they were doing that, doing their thing. I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm rooting for them. Like, do your thing. I never got involved in it. I didn't go to any sessions. I wasn't there when they were playing beats for Puff. None of that. I wasn't involved in any of that. And that, for him to say like I was trying to hold him back, because that was some of the stuff that he kind of said later on was like so inaccurate. Not accurate at all. At all. Um, but he was. You would say he was a, a big contributor to you in those days, in the uh, in the slaughterhouse days. He, Did he a, produce on the record. Lightly, yeah. Like some some of the some of the loops and stuff were his loops, and you know some of some of the you ideas. produced right. You produced. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I produced. Who, who produced? Who else on that album? Uh, Latif. Um, mm. Unique, which is from Ice Rock. Um, the heck, who else? Was it? Was it like? Was it like Chronic style? Like everybody was in there, like yeah. making beats and yeah. A lot, a lot of it was that you you would have dudes come in. Y'all got this loop. It's kind of ill. Boom, boom, boom. It's like, oh, that's cool, but let's put some horns on it. I got some horns. Right. And it was. It was really that. It was that like, vibe. like it was like a pot. Everybody was putting their yeah. shit in a pot. Definitely, definitely. And and like at the height of your poppiness between uh, the first album. Mm -hmm. Um and the second album, what well, what was like the highest level you got? That meaning, well, the mean the biz record. Well, take a look around. I was more popping between Slaughterhouse and Sitting on Chrome than I was between. That the was the most popping time. Yeah. So the most popping time was when was when Born to Roll came out. Right when the record you hate. Came exactly. Out. Of course. Well, that makes sense. Cause I'm a hater. Yeah. So as the well, backpacker, know, whatever well, your biggest success was, I had to hate. Of course, I was 14. Come on, give me a break. Well, I know Juice Crew Marley on Slaughterhouse. I really have moved on, man. Like, um, I just when we did when we did Slaughterhouse, that was my break away from cold chilling, cold right. stealing, cold stealing records, cold stealing, cold um, cold stealing. I finally got away from them, and I wanted to really just show that I could do this. You know what I mean? Um, Marley Marley had given me co. He, I was the first artist on on the on in the Juice Crew that he gave co-production to on the mm. first album, but I didn't get co-production money. Right. So I said, Yo, I'm gonna show that I can. Put, put together my own project and 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 at that time honestly he he was he had beef with them so he right. he didn't want to do records for them anyway right. right so it wasn't between you and marley at all no no i mean I, I once i moved to delicious vinyl in la once i moved to that label i was kind of doing my own thing and you and marley stayed good we stayed good he thinks for some reason that i don't like him but i'm i'm cool with him I have no problem with Marley. All right, good. Glad we cleared that up because we're about to do a part two with Marley Marlson. We'll see Marley soon, so we'll deliver that message. You can't chew gum during it, though. Marley's gum chewing is my biggest problem with him. I have serious beef about that. No, uh, it, it, it sounds different on a mic, that's why. We, yeah, we didn't notice it at the time. I didn't have headphones on. And all the listeners were like, why was Marley chewing gum? The whole, <laughs> he gave us some real gems, though. Oh, you know what? When we go to his house, we got to dig through and see what extra mass days shit he has around. He find shit. it, steal it. And let you know. And bring it, and bring it back. What do you want to ask about Slaughterhouse? Man. What's your favorite song, by the way? I can't answer that. I think mine's late model sedan. Mad ones. Mad ones is a uh, who you jack in. What's the one where you say, next time that go to rip me off, I have a pit bull waiting to oh, rip their the fucking big east, face off. The big east. Oh. Is that funky drummer incredibly slowed chopped down? And chopped like a second like two bar chop. Oh. Yeah. Ace, please. I gotta yeah. can I get your autograph? It's not just well, no, you have to in the book. He does you do Oh, I autograph. need the book. Um if you don't have a Slaughterhouse album, by the way. You really I ha you know you know how I always talk about dog pound albums? Slaughterhouse is the other one. There's not an iPad, I mean an iPod, a phone, or a Everything road has trip. It. Everywhere I go where I might need to listen to that, it's there. So would you Every put, phone I own has it on there. Would you put Slaughterhouse in your top five hip hop albums of all time? I would, but I don't ever say it. Why not? It's something about the Cause nobody's gonna like flow with that. Right. Because like, it's not a I should opinion. though. It's not a popular opinion. I should say it though, but it's so underrated that it doesn't even come up on your radar. How many mics you get in the source of that album? Three and a half. I never got more than three and a half mics Damn. ever in the history of my career on the source. Not more than three and a half for ever. slaughter. Who reviewed that? I don't know. I'm gonna call someone. I got a couple of phone call about this. Is the it too back late? and forth. Who you jacking? This I don't know. It might be the best back and forth. There's just so much good stuff about. A, it's a concept album, yeah. right? But the songs. 
can break out in individually. It's not like it needs to be a concept album, but it is a concept album. And you're talking about going hard sort of as a response to what people said about you, but you're also going hard as a response to the bullshit that was happening in hip-hop at the time. I absolutely was. Um, you know, it was there was so many NWA knockoff groups coming out, getting deals left and right, shooting videos and running around with Raiders hats on. It was just like, enough is enough. And it wasn't just the West. It was the East Coast, too. Everybody's wearing 40 Below's. Drinking 40, smoking blunts, you know, shooting guns. Back then you could show guns in videos. So that was all that was being glorified crazy. And that's all labels was messing with. And I, I just felt like this was ridiculous. You need to. Favorite gun in the video? Mm, good good question, Sife. Favorite gun in a video? Matt favorite T video with a gun in it. Oh, favorite video with a gun in it. Ooh. Um, tough. Really tough. Real tough. I know mine. What is it? Hot diggity dog in the Chub Rock video while he was dancing. Why do you have a gun in his belt? Who are you talking about? Hot Dog the Dancer. Dog. Hot Dog the Dancer. Who's Hot Dog? Treat Him Right. You ever heard Treat Him Right by Chuck Rock? Yeah, yeah. That's his main dancer? While Hot Dog is dancing, he has a, a gun and a pistol in his... No. Yeah. He's like, niggas thought I was soft because I was a dancer. So he, had, he, so he kept the gun on him? In the video. Go. Go. That's a really risky... By the way, I don't recommend... For any of the kids listening at home... Don't do that. If you're going to do the running man in a video, do not keep a gun in your way. It's just... It's irresponsible. It's just straight up irresponsible. Um... <laughs> Was there a big single off of the first album besides Me and the Biz? Music Man. Oh, Music Man, of course. They were both pretty fucking good. Yeah. Music Man was um dope video shot by uh Fat Five Freddy. Oh, he directed that video? Yeah. How did uh how did Marley find you? I won a rap contest in, at United States of America in Queens. Gosh, this is so hip hop. That was Remember so United old States? school what you just said. I heard of it. I never okay. been there. You're probably too young. I'm over I'm from the Bronx. I'm skaky. All right. So skate key all day. Let's not get into this about skate beef. Skate key, let's go. Um, so I, yeah, I went I went out to United Skates um, and entered this rap contest. First prize was six hours of studio time with Marley Maul. Whoa, that's first prize. Yeah, Jesus Christ. But that's I, a good prize. I, second prize was five hundred dollars. I was really kind of more had miles on that. <laughs> <laughs> Back then, that was money. That was money. Yeah, uh, I, was exactly. in, I, I was in college at the time, so five hundred dollars would have went a long way with the pizzas. <laughs> so anyway, I wanted. Where went, were you in college? University of Rhode Island. Wow. Okay. So, so I won the contest. I was actually on a college break, Christmas break, when I when I went and did this contest. I won the contest. Um, and got I got the six hours of studio time. It took me a year to actually meet Marley and get in the studio. Oh, you won. I won, but it took me a so year. So you fucking because they gave me a. They, Why didn't you call him on the cell phone? Oh yeah, they wasn't. They didn't exist. They said here's his here's his phone here's his here's his, here's his phone number. I'm calling this phone number for literally a year. Well, it's his house phone. <laughs> it was it was it was his mom's house in Queensbridge, and his sister would always answer the phone. He's not here. He's not here. It got to the I'll call so much that she knew my name. She mm -hmm. knew my voice when I called. Hi Ace. He's not here. I'm like she's like you know what? You're a nice guy. Like you call all the time. Here's his real number. And then she gave me the real number. Right. Nice. Finally. That is nice of her. After a year. After a year. And then I finally. You call what? Twice a month. And then I called him. He's like who's this? I said this is. Hey, I won the contest, and you know they paid you because they had already paid him for the studio time. Right. He's like, oh, all right, uh, meet me, whatever, such and such day. He was like, meet me at, let's say he said 12 o'clock or whatever, right? You know, me and Steady Pace, we get on the train, go away out to Queensbridge. Never been to, I don't like, I don't mess with other people projects because yeah. I'm from Brooklyn. And, yeah, of course. But we went out there. We sitting on the bench for, from, 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 we got there hour early. We had, we there from 11 to 6 p.m. About to start getting dark. Shit. And then like Craig G came out, didn't know, we knew who he was from videos, but he was like, what's up, who y'all waiting for, Marley? He was like, yeah. He was like, oh, all right. He sat there and talked with us for about two hours. Marley came pulling up like six o'clock. Yeah, Marley was balling out right now, by the way. <laughs> just just came pulling up. He had just bought a brand new uh, uh, Lincoln Mark Mark Five. Oh god! So he was like, was he hanging out with Funkmaster? He Flash? just got a bunch of money or whatever. <laughs> he pulled up in a new Lincoln Mark Five and he was like, okay, y'all, yeah, here for the session. All right, come on up. And I recorded my first little demo. I did like maybe three hours of recording. MC Shan was there. Met him that day. Um, and I recorded my first little demo. I met Cool G Rap and Polo that day too. Shit! Wow. Polo worth came, the wait. Polo came up. Well, they they weren't they weren't even a group at the time. Oh, they were just guys. Polo was a producer. He had a song with this cat named Frost that was like a big record. And um, but Frost got locked up, so he came to Molly's house. Yo, I got my I got this new this new MC. His name his name is Cool G. And he I'm, Molly met Cool G Rap the same day you met him. Same day. And, no way. And they recorded. This song, which at the time I thought was whack as hell, and wound up being it's a demo. Oh, you okay. didn't like it. I was like, this is you were sitting there hating. I didn't like it. it was, I didn't like. So, the, yo, hurry up with this bullshit. So the real MC recorded it while on. you were there. I was there. Right so he there. cut into your 
Contest no, studio. They time. had me in. They had me in the bedroom because the uh, bedroom was like a pre-production room. Uh, so I'm in the bedroom with Shan doing drum programming. But back then, cats weren't really sampling yet. So when he got the when he chopped up this funky drum and had this sample, it sounded weird to me. I was so used to just kind of drum patterns, right? Boom, bat, boom, 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 bat. You know, and and I didn't get it. And they laid it down, and I, I would say probably a year later they were playing it at Latin Quarter. At the, you know, in the club, I was like, well, I, mean, I was there when they recorded this. <laughs> Oh, is that bullshit? I, I, I like that it was G rap too, and you were probably hating. You're like, he I, he I, I got mushes more John Blaze. <laughs>